welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, January 15th, 2021. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Thursday evening confirm 48 new COVID-19 cases. According to a news release from the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, four of the cases arrived with negative PCR results and tested positive on entry screening. All of the other 44 cases are nationals with no history of recent travel. These cases were detected during contact tracing, testing of persons with flu-like symptoms, and exit screening. Nemo said there are now 255 local cases under investigation, four clusters associated with churches, four with work sites, and two with holiday parties have been identified, and that contact tracing, the CMO testing, said quarantining, that they are now and isolation managing the resources continue available and are aimed and at containing this COVID-19 outbreak in SVG. Nemo said the strict compliance with quarantine and isolation is even more important now in order to suppress any further spread of this viral illness and that persons who have been instructed to quarantine while awaiting their results must not leave their quarantine sites until they receive their test results. A total of 388 cases of COVID-19 have been reported in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to date. 107 persons have thus far recovered from the virus and 281 cases remain active. There are currently 17 COVID-19 patients admitted for care. And health promotion officer in the Ministry of Health, Shanika John, is urging persons who have tested positive for COVID-19 and are in isolation not to leave their homes or place of isolation until cleared. Speaking on NBC Radio face-to-face -face program this morning, John said the movement of these people can be another avenue to continue the spread of the virus. We have been stressing to those persons who have tested positive for COVID-19 that you should not leave your home to go to work. You should not leave your home to seek medical care. Um, you should not try to go to the supermarket or run what you consider to be very small errands. And that's the same for persons who are also in quarantine. Because the movement of these people could potentially be another avenue to spread the virus. So I really want to send that message home to persons. If you know someone who is in quarantine or isolation, please ask them to adhere to the specific protocols. We do have persons who are on our psychosocial team um, assigned to these individuals, and they can contact them directly because they have contact numbers and so forth for them. In the event that they may need something that they consider to be urgent or they need someone um, to seek, um, they need to seek medical care. So we ask persons to utilize those particular avenues rather than trying to venture out on their own. John further explained the difference between persons who are in quarantine and those in isolation. So I think this is a discussion that we have had before. Again, the information is not new. Um, it's important for persons to understand the difference between quarantine and isolation. Isolation is for persons who have tested positive for COVID-19 and they are now within a specific area under specific guidance from the Ministry of Health representative. Quarantine is more or less um, sort of a, a, a holding point for persons who either would have been waiting on their PCR test results or who would have asked to quarantine for a retest period from our medical advice. Um, it's important that people adhere to these measures because these are simple public health measures that could really curb the spread of COVID-19 in St. Vincent and Grenadine. The health promotion officer said that persons are still withholding information from the Ministry of Health, which is hampering the contact tracing process. She is asking persons to trust the Ministry of Health, noting that all information shared will be, keep, will be kept confidential. Them to submit their names, address, telephone numbers, workplaces, etc. Any information that you think would be useful. However, some persons would withhold information for a particular individual um, for whatever reason, and so we would not be able to get to those persons. And then later on in the process, 
we then identify that these individuals probably would have test positive or start showing flu like symptoms while they have been out and about at work out and about shopping, carrying on with what quote unquote seems to be their normal way of life. Um, and so by the time we test and we start that contact tracing process with the person, then the person would have indicated that I would have been with Calvin Harry just the other day and Calvin Harry previously tested positive, but that information was never communicated to us. John also noted that the recommendations for the conduct of mass gatherings as issued on January 8th 2021 restricting the number of persons in an indoor gathering to 10 an outdoor gathering to 20 was extended to january 25th 2021 like we said before this this protocol is really designed to stop the movement of people within any specific gathering whether it is within um church setting a party setting a home gathering setting funerals weddings wherever just in the event that persons who are there present, whether they're in quarantine or isolation, or persons may be waiting to hear their status. Um, and this is also important for us as well as in this particular phase where we are. Last evening, we confirmed 48 new cases of COVID-19. And from our last release, we also indicated that there were quite a number of clusters um, within churches, within business places, within holiday parties and so forth. Infectious disease specialist Dr. Gerald Thompson, who serves on the SVG COVID-19 task force, says in the near future, Vincentians can look forward to receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. He was speaking with SVG TV News uh, via a telephone interview, during which he used the opportunity to clarify and debunk some of the issues surrounding the vaccine. And St. Vincent will be part of a system which will help provide St. Vincent with vaccine. We'll have to buy also some, and we will soon be selecting and identifying which vaccine are the best for the Vincentian people, and also which ones are available, and, and, and so on. And by giving the vaccine, we are going to now prime our bodies with antibodies that will fight against the COVID-19 from within. So a mask, hand washing, and physical distancing are external things. By taking a vaccine, you would have primed your body with these special antibodies that the vaccine develops. And it will fight and kill the virus from within. Dr. Thompson said due to the harm caused by some medications and vaccines, he can understand the concerns of some persons about taking the COVID-19 vaccine. He, however, sought to reassure persons of the effectiveness of the vaccine as well as the safety steps used to create it. We normally judge vaccines on the basis of if they can be 50% efficacious or greater. And some of the early vaccines, like the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccines, are 95 and 94 percent effective, which is remarkable. And some of those, the method used to develop those vaccines, they've used methods that don't really use the virus itself. They use some artificial copies of the virus, which are not real virus, but they're able to turn these into a vaccine. The infectious disease specialist said there is also the conspiracy theory that the vaccine was created too quickly. But on the contrary, the creation process was not speed up. Instead, it was the evaluation and approval process that occurred faster than usual. Now, some of the conspiracy theories is that um, the vaccine was developed too quickly. Well, it's true it was developed very quickly, but normally when a vaccine is developed after different stages, you usually have to wait about a year before someone reviews it and gives it a stamp of approval. When I say it takes a year, it sits on someone's desk, it sits in someone's drawer, waiting for them to go to other applications before they reach that one. Everything has to take its turn. The vaccines on the COVID, because of the amount of deaths we've seen, they've jumped the queue. So other medications are waiting for approval. Vaccines have jumped ahead of those. But the actual studies have not been done any quicker. 
it is now the evaluation of the study. Since the vaccine has been administrated in some countries, such as the USA and the UK, a number of persons have had allergic reactions to the vaccine. Dr. Thompson said persons who usually have allergic reactions to vaccines or other medications should hold off in taking the COVID-19 vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine, they have identified that there, for persons who have severe allergies, severe allergies, they have to be careful and we probably should avoid it. The people with severe allergies are people who walk around with what's called an adrenaline pen. So those people say, you hold off for a while. Additionally, Dr. Thompson said the approved vaccine does not alter a person's DNA and that he would be happy to be one of the first Vincentians to take the vaccine in order to demonstrate his faith in its effectiveness. Based on the expert advice by the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment, and out of an abundance of caution, schools across SVG will remain closed until further notice. The Ministry of Education said it will make every effort to ensure that students are not adversely affected by the extended period of school closure. It urges parents, guardians, teachers, students, and other stakeholders to work harmoniously to rise above the challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic, noting that the health and safety of everyone is of paramount importance. The ministry also encouraged everyone to adhere to the COVID-19 protocols. Pensioners with the National Insurance Services, the NIS, who receive payments in check form are now encouraged to submit their bank or credit union account to have direct payments made through these financial institutions. This as the Social Security Protection Agency embarks on a financial inclusion drive for pensioners in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Marketing and Communications Officer Avia Charles told SVG TV News today that pensioners are at high risk and usually come in twice per month to collect payments and at this time less interaction is better for them. We have a pension population of 8,309 persons. From that, 928 of these persons receive checks every fortnight. We are encouraging those 928 persons to provide us with a bank or credit union account number so that their pension payment can be sent straight to their account. Why is this important? Especially in the context of COVID-19, what it means is that we are trying to protect our pensioners from physical interaction as much as possible. Additionally, if for some reason that the amount of COVID cases increase in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and our physical access to the building, we can't, that can't happen, we can still facilitate your pension payment, which would be sent straight to your bank or credit union, union account number. Charles said that they will be facilitating the processing of the process of creating an account once persons agree to have it done. She said this initiative also applies to persons collecting on behalf of a pensioner. To have a timeline in place, but what we, re what we recommend is that you do it as soon as possible. If you have been monitoring the situation, you realize that the COVID, in the context of COVID, is very fluid. So things can change suddenly. So what we encourage is as soon as possible, if you have a bank or credit union account number, you provide it to us. If you do not have one, we would assist you in the terms of furnishing you with a letter to take to your preferred credit union or bank that would facilitate the process of opening an account for you. If you are receiving a pension on behalf of a pensioner, what you can do, what you must do is to, re is to receive written permission from this pensioner. You bring it to us that written permission must be certified by a justice of the peace. If you are living overseas, it must be notarized and submitted to us. After that, we'd start sending the payment directly to your account. Persons approaching 60 years are encouraged to apply at least three months prior using the banks or credit unions. In the meantime, Charles noted that the NIS has implemented measures for safety of staff and customers against COVID-19 to calls as it relates to persons interacting or visiting our office. First of all, persons must wear a face mask or a face covering. They must sanitize or wash their hands prior to entry. And we've also employed a nurse 
who tests the um, person's temperature before they actually enter as well. We have also limited the amount of persons who are inside the NAS at any time, so that is nine persons. We persons are actually complying, and I think it speaks to the gravity of, of how serious the situation is or in terms of their understanding of how serious it is. An update now on the Lassofre volcano. The team of scientists from the UWI Seismic Research Center has successfully installed several stations at the summit of the volcano with assistance from some nearby community volunteers. The seismic stations are expected to provide information and give off signal closer to the crater. The stations were transported by the rotary helicopter which arrived in the state yesterday from Antigua. On NBC Radio this morning, lead scientist Professor Richard Robertson was asked about the possibility of the new lava dome reaching the volcano summit. He said it is likely, but it may take months and they are creating a model to determine a time frame. We're working with some colleagues in the UK and, and others who have, have done this kind of thing, both for the, well, well, for the 79 dome. Uh, you have to make certain assumptions and all of that, and, and we really would like to get, uh, over the next week or so, a better track of the rate at which it's growing. But we have begun to do that. We basically estimate in two things. We, we're looking at, at how, yeah, kind of how long it will take to, to get to a certain point, say, in the... In the, on the crater flow, given its current rate of growth and making certain assumptions about how it's growing, where it's growing. And then secondly, yes, filling up the crater will take a little while, but also more importantly to us was would it, when, when and if it will get high enough as a mass to start overtopping any part of the crater, the crater wall um, and then therefore have any potential that when, when, when pieces fall off of it, the pieces will fall into the surrounding land, which would extend the effect of the hot rocks sort of lower down. It suggests that it's going to take months for that to happen um, and, and a little bit shorter for you to actually see it, it because it has to move because there's a lot of speed. Professor Robertson said they are also using thermal camera to gather data from the new dome and the hottest area was from the middle of the dome. The camera gives us the impression of, of where the hot spots are and it tells us where it tells us something about how it's growing. Um, domes grow differently. Uh, one day, you know, is they could grow in a, in a sort of pushing up and, and a sort of conveyor belt kind of way, or they could grow you know, what we call endogenously. They could they could swell up from inside. This one seems to be growing more like a, a conveyor belt. So sort of it, it comes up and the, the fresh materials comes up from in the middle more or less, and it's attached to the material that was there before, and it, it, it's closed down side and forms a rounded mountain um, rather than say growing from swelling sort of say which which it looked appeared like it was doing at one point in a bulletin provided this afternoon the national emergency management organization nemo said observations made by the scientists indicate that the dome has continued to grow and is now about three quarters the height of the pre-existing 1979 dome it said gas emissions were observed from several areas of the 1979 dome as well as the crater floor through several cracks which have developed and that damaged the vegetation was extensive within the eastern southern and western parts of the inner crater walls. Nemo said the damage reported on previously that is occurring along the upper part of the southwestern crater rim has continued to slowly extend down slope. Alert level remains at orange as the volcano continues to exude magma on the surface and steam can still be observed from the Belmont Observatory. Persons living in areas close to the volcano should expect strong sulfur smells for several days to weeks, depending on changes in wind direction. Nemo is reminding the public that no evacuation order or notice has been issued and it continues to appeal to the public to desist from visiting the volcano, especially going into the crater, since doing so is extremely dangerous. Nemo said it will continue to provide regular updates on all activities taking place at the volcano. A veteran broadcaster, Randy D. Dupwell, passed away last evening, surrounded by his family at his home in Rockies. 
following a period of illness. Today, there were an outpouring of tributes from colleagues and friends. Opposition Member of Parliament for Central Kingston, Sinclair Leacock, said he has known Randy D all his life and is saddened by his passing. Radio host Colin Graham said he admired Dopwell for his love for broadcasting and for promoting local content. Both our mothers were ice cream vendors in the Kingston market. We both attended prep school and grammar school together. Both members of the Miller House at Grammar School played football for the Grammar School team. Served together at NBC Radio, where I was chairman and he was a uh, staff member. So you see how long the history is. And radio presentation, and I always admired his love for everything local. If there's one thing, he was a true connoisseur of all things local, especially local music, local talent, um, our local culture. He really had a profound love and respect and appreciation for it and it was part of who he was as, as as a radio person i mean randy was the one person you know for sure would give all local artists a fair play an equal opportunity and the small upcoming local entertainer an opportunity and a chance to let their music and their talent and their vibe as they would say really be heard and um Graham said Dopwell deserved full recognition for his work in broadcasting, and it is a pity that he did not get one while he was alive. The great individuals go to their grave before really getting the true honor bestowed upon them as they deserve, and Randy definitely is somebody who would be fitting of, of all of that, and he, he will be missed. I remember days up on the radio station laughing and joking. He remained my friend for, for many years as I transitioned through radio, and I will always remember his impact and his influence on a youngster like me, a young broadcaster. He's, he's an outstanding national icon by any measure in the field of sports and culture. In a Facebook post today, the National Broadcasting Corporation said it mourns the passing of Dopwell, who was a former member of staff. The corporation said as a broadcaster, Dopwell ensured that persons in the diaspora had an avenue to send greetings to their family and friends back home and that he has left an indelible mark on the media landscape in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and has inspired many in the profession today. The Carnival Development Corporation also extended condolences uh, to family members, relatives, and friends of Dopwell. In a statement, the CDC said it joins in solidarity with everyone to express gratitude for Dopwell's outstanding contributions to the radio, entertainment, and cultural industries of SVG over the years. Uh, Dopwell officially started his radio life in SVG in 1977 after he was appointed chairman of the pre-carnival shows when Vinci Mass was changed from the pre-Lenten season to June-July. May soul rest in peace. In other news, five days after he fell down a flight of steps in the Redemption Sharps area, opposition member of parliament for Central Kingston, Sinclair Leacock, said though he is out of the hospital, he remains in a lot of pain and still cannot move about on his own. In a telephone interview today with SOG TV News, Leacock said uh, that he has been very careful not to contract COVID and with the upcoming presentation of the budget estimates on January 27th, which is less than two weeks away, he remains hopeful that he will recover to make an input to the debates. I, I, I'm remaining optimistic, even if I just have to sit and participate. I, I remain optimistic that I'll have a sufficient recovery by that time. Really, no lessons. It's, you can't be, you can't be more careful than I've been, you know. Because basically, you know, since you know, trying to avoid any exposure, I, I, that's why I didn't go into the church, didn't congregate at the cemetery, because of the COVID. So you're, you're running from the COVID and you're running to something else. <laughs> So this thing is going to get you one way or the other. Leacock believes that the incident surrounding his fall was an accident and not deliberate as some persons have been suggesting. He recalls what happened on Sunday, January 10th, when he fell down a staircase at a house in Redemption Shops. I had just been served some, some food and was walking away with it while she was collecting a drink so I could go back to her home, which was next door. So this was at the top of a flight of about 10 to 14 stairs. When suddenly I felt a push at my back, 
that catapulted me down the flight of stairs into the street and on the EPAP vehicle. I was pulled out and driven to the M M C MCMH for medical examination and treatment, including x-rays and discharge early in the morning. I, I think it's accidental. Lecoq says that the injuries received were severe even though there were no broken bones and that he will be undergoing therapy. Most, well, no broken, no, no broken bones, but serious muscle damage on the left side of the body. Left shoulder, rib cage, right back, upper, upper lower legs. Mm. I cannot walk at the moment, no. So I'm, I'm not walking as, just as yet. Uh, I'm trying to stand upright again, not not quite successfully as yet. Okay. I, I, I just, yeah, I, I confidently want to walk again. I, I visited the, doc, the um, medical centers for treatment again this morning for further um, examination. And um, a therapist will come in today. We do wish him a full recovery. In other news, Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Kiesel Peters, has called on the UN Security Council to make it a priority to counter terrorist threats and work together to combat to combat violent extremism. Peters made a call on Tuesday during a UN Security Council ministerial meeting titled 20th Anniversary of Security Council Resolution 1373 and the establishment of the Counterterrorism Committee. Peters told the meeting that COVID-19 has caused some additional challenges, but their work must continue in this area. Strong coordination and collaboration between the committee CTED and UNOCT must continue, and we encourage the committee to enhance collaboration, information sharing, coordination with member states. Indeed, international, regional, and sub-regional cooperation remains vital in combating terrorism and bringing terrorists to justice. The UN Global Counterterrorism Strategy is a useful tool to further this cooperation between states. The junior minister shared the view that political differences have contributed to violent extremism and asked that the UN Security Council to encourage its members to ensure this does not continue. Irresponsible arms sales, persistent conflicts fueled by geopolitical rivalries and other counterproductive actions should be avoided by all member states. Selective condemnation of terrorist attacks, depending on which side of the border they are committed or by whom, only undermines our collective efforts to address this scourge. In addition, we must all ensure that any measures taken to combat terrorism comply with obligations under international law. Other members also made an input by highlighting achievements in international cooperation, challenges and opportunities. Air Canada will be suspended all flights to St. Vincent and the Grenadines effective January 23, 2021. SVG is part of the airline's international list of stations closed and routes suspended until further notice. The airline's 25% capacity reduction include 44 temporarily suspended flights, 12 domestic, 10 transborder USA, and a full 22 international routes. In a memo, the airline said, though it understands the action taken will be a blow to its workers and partners, it was left with no choice. Vincentian and Damien Mactier deliver the valedictorian speech at the first virtual graduation ceremony of the University of the West Indies Mona campus yesterday afternoon. Mactier, who received a Bachelor of Arts degree in Integrating Marketing and Communications with First Class Honors, represented the faculties of Humanities and Education, Science and Technology, Engineering, and the Institute of Gender and Development Studies. While reminiscing on the adventures and joys of his UWI experience, Mathieu, in his speech, recounted how the COVID-19 pandemic dealt him and other graduates a hefty blow. The COVID-19 pandemic prematurely took away normalcy and placed our journey into obscurity. It heralded dark clouds of depression. 
displacement, and our ability to say proper goodbyes. It also made some of us regional and international students feel stateless as we were unable to travel home due to closed borders. He also rallied his colleagues to use the light of knowledge they have gained through their time at the UWI Mona campus to build a more resilient Caribbean. The COVID-19 pandemic forced us to transition and we did. We are the first fruits of this transition to a new way of being and doing things. And luckily for us, we have been given a light of knowledge from the University of the West Indies to go on. We must use this light to challenge poor tertiary education funding, eliminate the digital divide, push for cyber security, craft the new infrastructure needed to respond to climate change, push for gender equality issues, human and language rights, opportunities in the media and cultural and creative arts industries, and to advance science, technology, and food security. But most of all, we must use this light to brighten the paths of others as they journey to their mountaintops of success. MacTeer thank agencies and individuals who supported the students as they faced difficulties of varying degrees due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as their family, friends and lecturers who would have sustained their courage. MacTeer is a past student of the J.P. Eustace Memorial Secondary School and the St. Vincent and Grenadines Community College. He, knows, he now serves as a lecturer for communication studies at the SVG Community College. And the SVG Community College is scheduled to host on Monday, January 18, 2021, an information session detailing the UWI Mona Campus Bachelor of Science nursing program offered through the college. The session, which will be broadcast through Zoom from 6 p.m., will discuss the BSc nursing program structure detail, its entry requirements, outline the application process of a student insight, and more. Communications and marketing manager of the SVG Community College, Teacher Kirby, said these sessions are pivotal in assisting prospective students in navigating their next academic step. She noted that equipped with the necessary knowledge, a prospective student is better positioned to assess how well a program aligns with their personal, professional and academic aspirations, as well as their ability to successfully pursue studies. Gerby said the college will be hosting these sessions more frequently, focusing on the various programs across its four divisions in hopes of increasing the number of adequately informed applicants. For more information on the Zoom program, persons can visit the college website.